The next movie on the list is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the ninth film of the Quentin Tarantino saga. What I think about it? Roll that intro, yo! So What's Upon a Time in Hollywood, what's it about? Well, you know by the trailer, Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt the stuntman, Leonardo DiCaprio is the has-been actor, and he's been going through this scenario of, you know, what's he going to do in Hollywood, is he going to stay in Hollywood, is he going to go to Italy and do spaghetti westerns, and what's Brad Pitt going to do in this whole meantime, but in the meantime, the Manson murders are in this kind of timeline, but is Manson really part of the story, and how is this movie? This is a very long movie, guys. Two hours and 45 minutes. Do you like a long movie? Yes. Did I like that it was a long movie? Yes. I think that was the big thing about this movie that I enjoyed. It was the length of how Quentin Tarantino did this movie. I think because a lot of movies nowadays, there's a lot of, you know, how I do a lot. Fast talking, fast talking, fast talking, fast talking, fast talking. And sometimes it is nice to just look at scenery. And that's what Quentin Tarantino did in this movie. He wanted you to check out the scenery of 1969 Hollywood. He wanted you to check out the different parts of California in that time frame. He wanted you just to look. And I am absolutely okay with that because this was made for the 60s and 70s time period. And movies in the 60s and 70s time period had the slower dialogue, had the slower scope, had the scale of it, how it was, like bigger scale. I don't want people like, oh, there's a lot of big scope in movies nowadays. Yeah, but it's all CGI. This. Of course, you have to do some CGI with this movie just to like, get the whole vibe of it. But this was a scope of the 60s and 70s, and Quentin Tarantino knows what he's doing, even though he has only, when you think about it, only nine films. That's not a lot of films when you think about it, but he's done his craft, and he knows what he wants. For story-wise, of course, you have Margot Robbie, you have Al Pacino, you have Timothy Oliphant, you have Dakota Fanning, you have multiple people in this movie, and there's a lot of subparts the main to me is not the Leonardo DiCaprio this is a Brad Pitt movie 100% a Brad Pitt movie of how he's going to do this scenario because he's the one going to the Manson ranch in the desert he's the one doing this other stuff and of course there are some good Leonardo DiCaprio dialogue of how he's making a western and how he's in Columbia F uh, Columbo FBI and other things but I like the pace of this movie I can see some people getting bored with it I really can because people's attention span nowadays is clickbait, 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 and doing what they want to do. But this movie, you watch and you enjoy what is on the screen. I like this movie. The more I think about it, the more I want to rewatch it. This is one of the movies where I watched it and I was like, I like this movie. And the next day I'm like, okay, I really like this movie. I talked to my mom about it. I'm like, okay, I really like this movie. I think we need to go see it because that's how much I like it. This movie, like, it is growing on me if you want to Quentin Tarantino's better films just because... I like the slow pace. I like the atmosphere of the movie. I like what they did. Is this one of his more violent ones? Not even close. It's actually probably his more least violent ones. But the ending was so satisfying. Like, I never... I'm trying to think of a more satisfying ending than this movie. And I cannot think of a more satisfying ending of how he decided to do it. It is pitch perfect. I can't think of a better ending to do because you knew something was going to happen. Like, you just know and you're just like, come on. Come on. And he did it to please the audience. And it's a high five round of applause for Quentin Tarantino to do what he did. I know there's some, you know, clips or quips of like, oh, you didn't give Mar Margot Robbie enough lines and blah, blah, blah. She didn't need enough lines or she didn't need that many lines because she really wasn't the focus of the story. And you don't want to focus her because in real life she dies. Sharon Tate dies in real life. So you don't want her to even be the focus because... You just don't, in my opinion. And I like how Quentin Tarantino did some of his scenes with the actors like Margot Robbie and Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, he puts the narcissism on actors that they need to be seen. They need approval from their peers of how they're kind of... I don't want to say this is going to be wrong, the mental unstable of some actors. But, like, you know, some actors, they just do their job. Like, you kind of just tell, like, Mark Wahlberg, he does his job, he's cool. He's chill. But then you have other people out there who are, like... This is like dead serious. Playing pretend is dead serious to them. You're just like, hey, you don't need to prove by everyone. Just do your job. Have fun. You're making millions. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, yeah, you can have some bad days. Sure, everyone has bad days, but just breathe in and out. 
and the narcissism that they show of some of these actors, I thought was pretty funny. Of like when the whole Leonardo DiCaprio, like he needs approval from an eleven year old girl, and he starts crying because she says the best acting. Like it, it's funny in my opinion. But man, once upon a time in Hollywood, I enjoyed what they did. I enjoyed the slow burn of this movie. I enjoyed looking at just old school stuff, and I love it. like those damn hippies. I enjoyed this movie, guys. Is there some flaws? Is it a little long? Yes. But the thing is, I would want to see what he cut because apparently he cut. There's other scenes, like other actors that were in this movie. I can't remember who it was. I think Tim Roth had a role. His role got cut. And I want to say another person, like James Marsden, was apparently in this movie. His role got cut. So I want to see what he had to cut to actually get to this scene. But Emil Hurst was also in this movie. Pretty, I was like, oh, yeah, Emil Hurst is in this? I didn't really realize he was in it. But Once Upon a Time in Hollywood will receive a four and a half out of five blue food on Ziggles at 90%. So see the critics and user scores gave this film. So you have the critics at 85% with 491 of them. Damn, that's a lot of them. And you have the users, sorry, a 70% with 25,038. Here's Crick Consensus. Thrillingly unrestrained, yet solidly crafted. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood tempers Quentin Tarantino's provocative impulses with the clarity of a mature filmmaker's vision. Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, it's a great movie. I enjoy it. It's one of the movies I will buy. I am trying to slow down on my movie buying. I really am. I have actually. But this is one where it's like I could put this on and I can enjoy what he's doing. And this is one too where I want to watch special features. Plus, I love how he put like Leonardo DiCaprio in the old FBI show and how he used the old. I just love watching old stuff and how they did it because like I look in today's days and age of how people would survive like even a hundred years ago they couldn't have these people nowadays would not survive they just i don't know if they have the mental and physical strength to actually just it's more like mental strength of can people actually do it and people are like oh but there was different laws back then no take these laws and take it a hundred years in the past of like trains and everything but the same laws like you know no slavery everyone votes the same yada 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 but take it to the 80s where, or the 1800s, sorry, like the Western time frame, or the Knights. But same laws, but no technology, people wouldn't survive. But do you agree with my 90, the 85, or the 70? Chase, I get the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Well, no, I think it's Blue Futon Utopia, you Blue Futonians. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. And speaking about Quentin Tarantino, he has like three movies. It's like either going to be Star Trek, it's either going to be Kill Bill Volume 3, or a Django Zorro mismatched give me kill bill volume three i need more kill bill three more reviews though three more reviews <laughs>